your cingulate cortex is involved in the cognitive evaluation of pain, influencing how unpleasant we find the sensation and how much attention we pay to it. This interplay between the sensory and emotional dimensions of pain explains why the same injury can feel more painful in different emotional contexts, such as when we're anxious or depressed. It's This negative thought pattern can ex 
exacerbate pain perception by amplifying the emotional distress associated with the pain and increasing the activation of pain pathways in the brain. It's associated with greater pain intensity, increased disability, and poorer outcomes in chronic pain conditions. Conversely, positive emotions and effective coping strategies can reduce pain perception. Uh, techniques such as cognitive behavioral therapy, mindfulness-based stress reduction, and acceptance and commitment therapy aim to modify the way individuals think about and respond to pain, reducing its emotional impact. These therapies have been shown to decrease pain intensity, improve functioning, and enhance quality of life in individuals with chronic pain. Pain is not only a sensory and emotional experience, but also a social and cultural one. Our upbringing, cultural background, and societal norms significantly influence how we perceive, express, and cope with pain. In some cultures, stoicism in the face of pain is valued, and individuals may be less likely to express their discomfort openly. In others, expressing pain is seen as a necessary step in seeking support and validation. These cultural norms shape our pain behaviors and can even influence our psychological response to pain. For instance, research has shown that cultural differences can affect the expression of pain and the use of pain-related language. Uh, people from cultures that prioritize emotional restraint may report lower pain intensity and use fewer expressive terms to describe their pain, even if their physiological pain responses are similar to those from cultures that encourage emotional expressiveness. This cultural variation highlights the importance of considering the sociocultural context when assessing and treating pain. The social context in which pain is experienced can also impact its perception. For instance, the presence of supportive family members or friends can reduce pain intensity, likely due to the activation of the brain's reward and pain relief systems. The social support has been shown to increase the release of oxytocin and endorphins, which have analgesic effects. Conversely, the social isolation or lack of support can exacerbate the pain experience, making it more difficult to cope with. The experience of chronic pain further illustrates the complex interplay between biological, psychological, and social factors. Chronic pain, unlike acute pain, persists beyond the expected period of healing and often serves no clear protective purpose. It's not simply the result of ongoing tissue damage, but involves changes in the nervous system itself, a process known as central sensitization. In central sensitization, the spinal cord and brain become hypersensitive to pain signals, amplifying them and sometimes generating pain in response to non-painful stimuli. This phenomenon highlights the brain's role in modulating pain and demonstrates how pain can become a disease in its own right. The central uh, sensitization involves several mechanisms, including the increased excitability of neurons in the dorsal horn of the spinal cord, decreased inhibition of pain pathways, and neuroplastic changes in the brain's pain processing centers. These changes can result in allodemia, where normally painful stimuli such as light touch or normally non-painful stimuli such as light touch are perceived as painful and hyperalgesia where uh, painful stimuli are experienced as more intense than they really should be. 
understanding central sensitization is crucial. 